Hi, Jack. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Um, first, I would like to start with um, this Saturday, Charles Bradley passed away. Yes. What was it for you? Because you did a song with him? I was shocked because I thought that he was, you know, recovering. I'd heard about the stomach cancer. Um, and then I heard that he was playing shows again, so I was really excited to see him again. And someone from the band came in the dressing room and told me. And yeah, we were all just shocked and we had a, like a quiet moment and then we went on stage and dedicated the show to him and tried to play as well as we could and be sort of a fitting tribute to him, especially this, the song Grant Green. Yeah. And what are your memories of him? He was just the most like warm-hearted person I've ever met. Um, he just had so much love and that's what you can hear in his performances, I think. He's like giving everything that he has. Um, I was actually standing next to him in the booth while he was singing, because he likes to learn things orally rather than with a piece of paper with lyrics. So I'm standing shoulder to shoulder with him and I sing the line and then he sings it back in his unique, unmistakable voice. And that was the most surreal moment of my life probably. Because it's so different hearing it just next to him than on a record. It's hard to describe, but it's such a rich and thick tone just from one voice. It sounds like 10 voices. It's amazing. How did this collaboration come, come about? Well, I'd written the song and it made me think of Daptone Records and that kind of sound that they were doing over there. So I just got in touch and said, I can definitely hear Charles on this song, what do you guys think? And Did you know him already? I knew his music, okay. I'd never met him before. I'd been to see him play in London, um, and I was a big fan of his. Um, but I was just, you know, fingers crossed that they liked it. I just sent them the MP3, and they did. What did he say? He said, I remember him talking about how he, he can't be on a song without sort of first talking about it and getting the sense of the meaning behind it. And so we sat down and I, I said a bit about the kind of themes that I wanted in the song and we talked about the lyrics and you could tell that he really wants it to feel personal even though it's someone else's music. So that was like the first stage, I think. And what did, um, what, st uh, strikes, what did strike a chord with him with this song with the lyric? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a few lyrics, especially um, for me, it's the, the, the line, I know true love never dies. For me, that had Charles written all over it. So when we sung that on Saturday, after hearing the news, it was sort of a very powerful moment, I think. So I think that line does really resonate with him. And yeah, it makes me think of him. And what, on this album, you, this is, did you have people in mind when you started started writing this album? Or was it just no. song per song? Yeah. yeah, I'd just write a song and then sit there for a few minutes and think who in my wildest dreams would be the perfect person for this. And it's, the crazy thing is, you know, it happened so many times that people were excited about it and I wasn't expecting that to happen. So. Why, why not? I don't know, I just guess I, I, I didn't think that these people are so busy and have, you know, so much going on that I thought that they wouldn't even have time to listen to it, but they obviously did, so. And what did they tell you? Um, why they actually took time to listen to it? Did they know you from, from Bombay Bicycle Club? I think that helped because there was a story there and I was already quite established, but I think, I think it was just the music really, I think. It's so far removed from Bombay Bicycle Club that that probably gets you a foot in the door, but I think it was actually the songs themselves that made these people want to do it. How come this music is so far removed, like you, like you were saying, from, from the music you did with Bombay Bicycle Club? How come? Well, it's just a different side of the songwriting that I do. I've always done music like this. It used to be on the back of a tour bus when I was touring with Bombay Bicycle Club and it would be a side project then 
so now I just want to make it a, a full-time thing and see what happens. So that's what this whole project is, is, <clears throat> you know, what happens when you put all your effort and all the time and money into this rather than just it being a side project. Is it for you, um, um, well, you decided to, well, to, I don't know if it's, is it, if Bombay Basket Club is it is it really over now or is it just a hi hiatus? It's just us trying to do something new, so it's a hiatus, I think, because there wasn't any bad blood, there wasn't um, any big arguments or anything. It's just I'd, with anything in life, sometimes you want to see what's on the other side. When did you have this feeling that you actually wanted to see what's on the other side? during Bombay Bicycle Club? It was probably the last tour that we did when I finally thought this has to stop because I'd come off stage and I'd be listening to you know jazz and funk and soul and in sound checks I'd be playing those kind of bass lines and wanting someone to join in but it, it, it was just you realized that there were two sides of you the one was on stage playing this type of music but the real personal one backstage was had become something different. So you, you said had become something different. Was there one specific moment you thought, well, now I am this person? I, I, I have become this person? Yeah. yeah, like I said, it was probably the last Bombay album because Bombay. you can hear that I'm trying to put loads of samples on that record as well. You can hear me trying to steer it into this direction, but there's only so far you can do that without it becoming a bit of a mess. So I thought it was much more um, of a wise decision to, to just put a full stop to it rather than trying to blend everything and it becoming, I, di I didn't want it to become a compromise. Was it in hindsight maybe also in the album title, So Long See You Tomorrow? Maybe, maybe it was written in the stars, I don't know. No, I think that was just a coincidence. Okay. And um, what did the other, uh, when, when you told them, what, what did they say? I think they weren't surprised. Um, they'd seen it coming, but obviously they were quite sad. And but it, it immediately became a very positive conversation because we talked about what everyone wanted to do for the next couple of years, and you realised how much there was out there that we all had been craving that we couldn't do because we were just touring or making records, and that's not really real life. Um, Jamie went to university, which we never did, and he wanted to study, and Ed is a painter, and he wanted to do that, and he's also making some new music, so... Yeah, there was a, there was a positivity in the end. I read somewhere, and I, I guess it's true, but you went on a cargo ship? Yeah. Um, can you explain the decision to, 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 go, to, to, to go on a ship? Um, well, I'd been interested in it in a while just because I didn't like flying so I was researching ways of getting from A to B without flying so I was taking a lot of trains and I just wanted to get away from everyone because I'd been on tour for like two years and you're in a very close environment with lots of people and I'm quite an introverted person so I thought where's where's the most isolated place I can go to and it was probably a ship in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Well, and what was it like? How, how did you get to this ship? What? So I took a train to Shanghai, which took a month, and then the ship went from Shanghai to America. And you just fill out some paperwork and give them some money. And what did you bring? I brought a studio in a little box. Um, I shipped it over from London to Shanghai and I had all my computer and key keyboards and all my equipment that I needed to write music. So I just set up on the ship a little home studio. But did you also write on the train when you went to Shanghai? The train was just for like inspiration and I was listening to a lot of music and I think you have to have both. They're equally important, the writing and the inspiration. What was the first song you wrote on that ship? So it's called Typhoon. It's the first song of the album. And it's about, some of the seas were really rough, so the ship was like swaying an incredible amount. All my equipment was moving across the table, and so I wrote that song. Was it hard? 
I mean, music-wise, but also for you being a person over there with all the... Oh, no, I loved it. Yeah. I want to go back. I really miss it. Um, there was no distractions at all and no one to bother you. And you could just read books all day or listen to music or write or... You could go and talk to everyone and they had some... They were very interesting people. And for them, you're kind of a... You know, you're something new in their daily life, which is very monotonous. So they're very eager to talk to you and share stories with you. And any time of night, you could wake up at four or five in the morning and there'll be someone watching the deck, you know, 24 hours a day. So you can always just go and have a cup of tea. And is there one story of a person you met over there that actually made it onto the album? Not onto the album, but I made it onto his album. So the chef on the ship was a musician and he had this song that he'd written for his wife who he never sees because he spends nine months a year at sea so he asked me if I could record it for him and give him a CD so he came into the little studio and we made a record just f to give to his wife and how did can you hear the influence of the trip that you had on the ship on the album? just on the one song on Typhoon that I immediately think of that time when I listen to that, but everything else came much later. But I, you could probably hear it in like my, you know, my mental health, because I needed that trip. Why? Just to rebalance everything and and have time to actually just you know think and and plan my next step, I, I suppose. And what what sort of idea did you have about the next step? Well, it was kind of a way to to combine all the music I was making with samples and electronics with live instrumentation because I, I loved both and I wanted it to not be too, you know, digital and, and cold sounding but also I wanted to have those interesting textures that you have with samples so I was just listening to a lot of music that did that quite well um, what sort of music? Artists like um, Caribou and Fortet, lots of, you know, uh, lots of great British producers. Um, and then lots of beat makers like Madlib um, and Jay Diller and that kind of stuff.